guys this is a quick one today and I want to go over some things that I forgot to cover yeah sounds strange but I actually forgot to cover some things and these are some pretty basic things now this is more of a if you are new to this game very new these are some basics that you really need to know okay uh, simple things which make gameplay easier now first off you got your panels this is Elite Dangerous 101 and I've never really commented on it or mentioned it, but it sometimes can be a little complex. Hitting obviously one is your navigations, transactions and contacts, all basic stuff. Also has a link to the galactic powers at the bottom for power play. Two is your comms panel, which has wing information and settings, uh, friends and history and inboxes and other stuff like that, including settings. Central is down here. This is where you'd have like SRVs, fighters, things like that. Four, the right panel. Your status, your stats, um, modules, and things like that. Fire groups. Now, this is an example of one I have set up here. This is how I always set my ships up. First fire group is always the energy weapons, aka things for hitting shields. I always have those set up with a kill warrant scanner. Second group on the same trigger, same energy weapons, but the second group uh, trigger now is my full weapon, multi cannons. Then I have my other devices in other categories, okay? Inventory is inventory. Functions are functions. If you ever have your power plant die in combat, reboot. It can normally fix it and get you flying again, or any sort of module fails. Hit reboot repair. Things to not press. Well, I always have report crimes against me off because I do PvP. That's a given. And one thing to never have turned on. Where is it? Disappeared. Oh, you can't self-destruct in a station. It's probably a good idea. Modules. Quick one to run through on this. If you ever run out of power, you can turn things off. But here's another idea for you. Say I'm running pretty close on power, okay? And my ship might be not quite good enough. Priority 1 means it's always going to be on. Priority 2 means it's a secondary priority. 3 means it's now lower. Typically, if you have something you have to set it to equal, then you can drop another one down, okay? So we're going to leave that on 1, probably 2. 5 means as soon as I turn, I deploy my weapons and something needs to be used but I have too little power anything set to 5 will automatically turn off so things I don't need in combat now you can do it to your frameshift drive if you absolutely need the power turn that off when you deploy weapons but it means it has to reboot and reload when you put them away which typically means you're running and need to jump that adds extra time never set your frameshift drive to be priority 5 door scoops cargo hatches go for it not a problem Okay. That's basically the shorts of those options. Nice and simple. Go back to panel one for a second. Let's look at the galaxy map. Now, we talk about the filters. Okay? And you'll see exactly what I've got listed here. There are a certain number of stars that are scoopable. F. O, A, M, K, G, and B. KGB foam. Nice acronym to remember. But those stars are all scoopable. L, T, Y are not. So try not to scoop from those. Doesn't really work. But of course you've got those other ones to specify certain types of star but in these cases those are the ones you need to know those you can scoop from that's useful how do you feel scoop? There's two options you can either park stop 
and scoop, or you can orbit. I prefer to orbit, which I will show you in a minute. But essentially, you keep moving, you scoop, you don't gain as much heat. Okay? Now we're going to look at the menu first before we do anything else. And we're going to go to options. Now, controls is an important one. And I'll show you two that are very important. Now, that's not where I want to have these located. Here it is. Flight thrust. Lateral thrust. I have set... Now, these are all set on a hat switch on my throttle. And you can set them any way you want. But I like to have these set. Thrust left and right and thrust up and down. These are momentary inputs, so button. But you can have them as an axis if you want. Okay, so if you have something else you can use for an axis, do it. What do these allow you to do? I'll show you now. Always have those set. I use these so often, I don't think about it. We're going to release from the dock now. Now you notice whenever I've taken off or landed, I do so vertically. And I can position myself. It's a great function. But as we come out of the station here, you'll see... As soon as I release... Up we come. Ship released. Access corridor is clear. And I can stop. I can side to side. Now, for landing and taking off, these are incredibly important. Same things for fuel scooping, or well, not fuel scooping, that's in super cruise, but same thing applies to cargo scooping if you don't use limpets. You know, you'll need to maneuver your ship. Now, in this context, it means you can actually maneuver far more precisely. Like if I was coming around, as my joystick squeaks there in the background, if I was going to fly back into the station, I could use this for minute corrections to my alignment with the starport, so I'm not having to constantly down, up, up, down, to align myself with the opening. I can just do it with the thrust. In fact, I'm doing it now, and I don't even think about it, but having the thrust vectoring is vital to smooth flight. It makes you a better pilot, and it makes you better at what you're doing in these terms. Now, we are going to fly out of the station system even, we are going to go to, you know what, easy aquaria I will do, so we're going to line up of course, and we're going to jump, here's where I'll show you about the fuel scooping thing, but uh, I use those in combat, and we're always thrusting up or down or left or right, it makes you harder to hit if people are using fixed weapons because you aren't going to be maintaining a constant trajectory, which helps. But in more important terms, it just makes you more maneuverable. For example, when I'm trying to hard turn, I will typically be thrusting down or up against the direction of turn, which does actually help you turn a little quicker. Fuel scooping. Let's have a look at this. Now, see this yellow line? Don't go inside it. It's when you drop out. Now, if I was to stop here, I'm scooping, and it's full, which doesn't help, but you'll see the temperature moves. I find it's better to circle the star, like I'm doing here. You'll still gain heat, but you can actually vary your distance a lot more. So if you're getting hot, you can just pitch away a little bit, back off, lose some heat. You can come back in again. You can keep doing it. It's a much more efficient system for scooping fuel without having to get too warm. Yet still gaining the same amount of fuel. Nice and easy. Now you notice in the right panel as we mentioned earlier, there is now another function. Or well, should be in here. Probably have to drop out, so we'll ignore that one. Orbit lines. Here's an interesting one. Turn it off. What do I see? Literally nothing. If you want a more realistic space experience, hit that. Pre-flight checks are fun, but eh. Turret weapon mode. Never use, obviously I can't change, I have no turrets on right now, but never use fire at will. They can light up anything and get you in trouble. Always use target. Flight assist. Let's have a quick look at this one, but we need to actually head somewhere where there's a thing first. 
So we'll try and find a station. Let's head to Magnus Gateway, shall we? Flight Assist is a wonderful thing. Flight Assist essentially offers you the benefits of maneuverability, but with automatic input correction. What this means is if you're in space and you were to thrust in a certain direction, you keep turning. Flight Assist takes the input you put in, as in I want to turn this much, and then applies an equal and opposite force to slow that rotation. Because there's no friction in space, you keep turning once you apply a force. You also overshoot targets when you're not thinking about it. But Flight Assist basically acts as a, a friction, or gravity, in space to counter your movements with a resistance. Essentially it fires a thruster in the opposite direction to neutralise the change of direction where you want it to stop. So I can pitch back and I stay facing that direction. With it off, you're a victim of Newtonian physics. When you press go, you stay in that fashion. We're going to drop in here at Magnus Gateway and I'll show you exactly what I mean. can be useful for shooting blockades, can be useful for hiding, can be useful for simply advanced combat manoeuvring. Being able to turn with flight assist off is a really useful asset and one that I recommend people practice with because it can come in very handy. Have a close button to actually apply it. My pinky trigger on my X-52 is my flight assist off button. Right, let's stop. Okay, so I'm going to turn. See, I stop. Why is this now off? Watch this. Pitch once, the same. And you'll see stars moving in front of me. I haven't touched the stick again. Still turning. Now I could arrest this myself, and I will in a second when we turn back around. The Magnus Gateway. Apply opposite force. And I stop. Apply thrust. Neutralize throttle. I'm still moving forwards. I haven't applied a neutral force, have I? I'd need to apply reverse thrust to do so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quest docking, since we're here at Magnus. We might as well dock, mightn't we? Same force is applied to your lateral thrusters as an NPC flies into me. That's nice of them. And that's set me wobbling because I have flight assist off. Oh my god, this is about to get hectic. I'm wobbling like crazy thanks to that guy that hit me. Let's try and stabilise our movement. But if you practice with flight assist off, you can use it almost like normal flight. But I recommend it because it becomes very useful. Typically things happen a little slower with flight assist off, but it still works. We apply neutralizing force, my trajectory, and we are heading inside. A little bit more precise than you might normally be. Rotating takes a little bit of a correction. It's a lot like playing flight simulator. In a helicopter where you have to correct after making an input. Okay, reverse engines to slow down. Neutralize altitude. Forwards. A little bit. Back to neutral throttle. In fact, a little bit reverse. Now there is minute gravity inside the docking ring, so you will start to sink. So let's just bring her in nice and gently. correct orientation. My hands are moving so much of the controls right now to keep stable. More than you could possibly imagine. And bang. Docking with flight assist off. Hopefully this makes up for my appalling lazy flying at other times. But yeah. So flight assist off is useful, especially for combat, 
you can flip on your back and shoot at some more whilst travelling away from them. You can do all sorts. Quick little thing people might not notice as well. Advanced maintenance. Paintwork. Yeah. You can actually repair your paintwork separately. And your ship's integrity. Very useful. Bought Olympic controller. Don't know how to work it. Go to restock. In advanced maintenance. Oh look. You can actually buy limpets here. Yep. That's where you get them. Same limp it works for any sort of controller. They're basically multi-purpose until you apply a certain controller. You can have multiple controllers. You can have Prospect Limpet Controller, Collect Limpet Controller. They all use the same limpets which you buy from the Advanced Maintenance Restock Facility. So hopefully this has covered some basic questions that perhaps I hadn't answered in the past. Um, I hadn't really thought about answering them. But you know what? makes a lot of sense to do so. We look back at the options again. Familiarize yourself, customize what you want to do. It's all down to what you prefer to use, but there are so many options around you can use, and they make a huge amount of, effort, of difference to the gameplay. Don't bother changing the galaxy map controls, they're basically fine. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this is a surprisingly simple video. I didn't plan to make this one, but I thought these are things that I've never really answered or talked about, but I think they're important. And hopefully anybody who's new to the game sees these, finds some of them useful, and it'll improve your quality of life in game. They're little things, but they all have an impact. Stay safe, Commanders. Thanks for watching. Bye.